Trying to navigate life without a set of rules is like heading into the vast seas without a compass. You will get lost in an instant. A lot of men fall into that age-old trap simply because of their egos. They think they know it all and have everything in control until they make stupid mistakes and their whole lives come crashing down. How pathetic. You can't afford to live life with a wing it attitude, my brothers. You must adopt order, routine, and principle in your life if you wish to accomplish something. Today I bring you the rules of Stoics that'll serve as a guiding light in your journey, if you use them well. The Stoics knew that life was complicated and exhausting, so to create rules was to help ensure that we stay on the right path, that we don't let the nuance of every little scenario make us drift away from what we seek. If you're ready to elevate your being, let's get into it. Rule number one, if life is short, then that's your fault. If only you knew life isn't short. It's the huge amount of time people waste that makes life seem like a quick breeze of air. As Seneca once said, we are not given a short life, but we make it short, and we are not ill-supplied, but wasteful of it. Stay away from useless luxury and irrelevant activities if you wish to live a happy and content life. To achieve this, start by making a list of the 20% of tasks that wastes 80% of your time. List these behaviors from easy to hard, then stop doing the easiest three of them. This simple exercise will save you hundreds of hours, my brothers, so get on it as early as you can. Rule number two, plan for complete failure. Brothers, have you ever heard of the term project pre-mortem? It's a common principle used by big business enterprises a week before launching new projects. In pre-mortem, managers and teams visualize the project as if it has failed, then work backward to determine what potentially could lead to that failure. Seneca once wrote, for by foreseeing anything that can happen as though it will happen, he will soften the onslaught of all his troubles. He believed a stoic man should expect bad storms and plan accordingly, as this is the wise man's way to survive. To Stoics, all conditions can change, and anyone can be a target of disastrous surprises. What can happen to one can happen to all, and only those brave enough to think in negative will endure the dangers and pain of life. Rule number three, treat success and failure. The same Marcus Aurelius shared a very interesting metaphor. He believed that a common man, an emperor, a soldier, everyone was like a rock. Throw the rock up in the air and it loses nothing by coming down and gains nothing by going up. The rock stays the same. His own life mirrors this analogy. He was an ordinary man plucked by Hadrian to become emperor, yet he could have been equally dethroned at any moment as well, and he nearly was too. Did this change who Marcus was? Did it mean he was better or worse than other people? No, he was still the same rock. And so are you, my brothers. Whether you have a day that begins with a promotion or ends with a firing, you're the same. Whether you win the lottery or file for bankruptcy, whether you address a crowd of thousands or have trouble getting your calls returned, you're the same. Success or failure, highs and lows, they don't change you. They are outside you. These are indifference. You stay the same. Rule number four, don't waste energy on goals you can't accomplish. For whatever work you do, it should never be in vain. The worst thing to do is waste your energy on a pointless goal you'll never achieve or a goal that will make you realize too late that it wasn't worth it. You must be critically honest with yourself. As Seneca once wrote, the next thing to ensure is that we do not waste our energies pointlessly or in pointless activities. That is what we cannot achieve, or for what, once gained, only makes us realize too late and after much exertion, the futility of our desires. Rule number five, focus intensely. Overindulgence and lack of focus are the two most common diseases shared by a lot of people. Many are not aware of where they're going. They interfere in other people's affairs while giving the impression of being busy. In reality, these people neither have the intention nor know where they're going. They're like dogs tied to a cart, compelled to go wherever it goes. The key to freedom is to understand that life will distract you as much as it can. You must then keep your goals in front of you and limit distractions as much as possible. Rule number six, see things for what they are. 
The best way to rid yourself of overindulgence and overattachments in life is to look through things and people and see them for what they really are. When you see roasted meat, you're only seeing a dead animal. When you see a luxurious robe, it's only dyed sheep wool. Or when you're making love, it's nothing but something rubbing against your little John. When you objectively view the many things in life that have a grip over your emotions, you take the first step in freeing yourself from them. The best way to limit attachments with people is to remember, when you embrace them, that you're embracing a mortal. Thus, when someone close to you dies, you can handle it with calm as you've come to terms with reality. You want to do this with everything, from your favorite cup to even your girlfriend or wife. It may sound harsh, but it is the best way to recover from life's unpleasant events and also avoid being clingy. Rule number seven, time is money. A study once found that people are more optimistic about how much time they have than how much money they can make. This way of thinking is usually why most people neither have the money nor enjoy their time. According to Stoics, no person hands out their money to passers-by, but to how many do each of us hand out our lives? We're tight-fisted with property and money, yet think too little of wasting time. The one thing about which we should all be the toughest misers. Rule number eight. Have empathy for people. To love people despite their flaws, that's the noblest thing you can do as a man. As Aurelius laid it, when you wake up in the morning, tell yourself, the people I deal with today will be meddling, ungrateful, arrogant, dishonest, and jealous. They are like this because they can't tell good from evil. But no one can implicate me in ugliness, nor can I feel angry at my relative or hate him. And lastly, rule number nine, always be present. A man should always remember two things, that everything has always been the same and keeps recurring, and it makes no difference whether you see the same things recur in a hundred years or two hundred, or in an infinite period, that the longest lived and those who will die soonest lose the same thing. The present is all that they can give up, since that is all you have, and what you do not have, you cannot lose. As Aurelius wrote, forget everything else. Keep hold of this alone and remember it. Each of us lives only now, this brief instant. The rest has been lived already or is impossible to see. The span we live in is small, small as the corner of the earth in which we live. I hope you have gained some golden nuggets from this video. Always remember, progress is in the action, not simply knowing. So tell me in the comments below, what changes are you going to make in your life from today? With that said, thank you for coming by and see you in the next video.